Hello, you're looking at an uh, oil painting of a uh, baseball. The size of this oil painting is 6 inches tall by 6 inches wide. It's uh, on a square format. It's uh, oil on uh, gessoed masonite. And uh, before the surface is actually painted on, uh, two to three layers of gesso are applied, acrylic gesso, and then sanded to uh, allow a very smooth painting surface. Now this particular approach to uh, oil painting you see is uh, quite traditional. It's uh, defined as a naturalist or a traditional realist painting. Uh, it's based on uh, looking very carefully at the actual motif before you. So over here to the left I have the actual baseball. And uh, observing the actual ambiance and space that the baseball exists within. Uh, looking a little bit further, you'll notice this really dramatic sense of light and shadow. Light is coming from the uh, upper right-hand corner and uh, allowing for a really dramatic uh, uh, cast shadow. You'll notice uh, this left edge actually dissolves into the cast shadow and becomes integrated with the surrounding atmospheric space, which is... Uh, quite evocative of a 16th century Baroque painting. You'll notice also that there's this superb interaction, a very dramatic interaction of warm and cool tonalities. So the colors you're seeing, if you look very cl closely, now this will vary according to the computer you're looking at this through. Uh, you're seeing the use of uh, some cadmium reds and the very carefully considered uh, uh, threads of the baseball, the way this is carefully woven around, and then you'll see these cadmium reds actually complementing with the uh, the cool neutral blues that flank and surround the uh, baseball itself. And then below you'll notice uh, some uh, yellow ochre tonalities, which are wonderful complements to the uh, lower key uh, values seen in negative space, which are for the most part. They consist of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Uh, and then there's these wonderful mysterious edges that sort of evaporate into the surrounding space to uh, you know, give, to evoke this real sense of mystery to the piece. Uh, this particular piece is quite different from a lot of the uh, contemporary realism you uh, see today. It's uh, not based on a classical uh, approach to illustration, but as I said before, it's traditional naturalistic painting. So in this particular approach, uh, you all can experiment with this at your home. If you look at a baseball before you, it's actually physically impossible to focus on every finite detail of that baseball at one time. And really what separates uh, naturalistic painting from, uh, let's say, photorealism in photorealism, the artist actually mimics what the camera presents. So in essence, a photorealist actually tries to replicate the classic uh, Kodak photograph. And uh, the way we see as humans is, uh, quite, is always in flux. And so when you look at this painting, and if you do happen to uh, win it as the top bidder, you'll notice that the edges and the details are highly suggestive. They're suggested within the space. And uh, this sort of a, a, a illusionism is uh, quite similar to the way we see as uh, human beings. We, we never can see every detail at one time. And so uh, there's a lot of real rich uh, marks in the surface, little twists and turns of the paintbrush. Uh, you'll notice that the edges vary greatly edge is uh, very sharp on the uh, upper right hand side uh, and then as you progress around the edge becomes softer 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 to actually mirror the way we see the way we see forms that surround us and then the same thing happens with the, uh, the stitches in the baseball there are areas which are a little bit more refined and then as you pro progress upward they start to diffuse back into the uh, dramatic atmospheric space. So, you know, it really does have this uh, this very inviting quality. 
It's a very warm mood. Uh, and then you'll notice that there are some areas where the paint is sort of uh, manipulated in such a way that some of the cool blues actually come through to, you know, parallel, create that illusion of, of some of the, uh, you know, the worn quality of an old baseball, that worn and tattered look. Okay, I've moved a little bit up closer to the baseball. One thing I want you all to see when you're considering uh, bidding on this piece is the, the richness to the uh, painterly surface. Now, for those of you who have uh, been to the Metropolitan Museum or Frick, you, you'll notice that when you get up very close to a Chardon painting that uh, within 12 inches the painterly surface looks quite abstract and then as you move back from the piece uh, perhaps an arm's length, the, the details start to come together and uh, the illusion of reality becomes even more apparent. And so, the foundation of classical realism, a lot of the classical realism that we see, especially uh, 18th century Baroque painting, if you were to look very closely at a Rembrandt or a, uh, even some of the Caravaggio's, you'll notice that there's all these little twists and turns and scrubs of the uh, paintbrush, which, you know, to the naked eye look like very sloppy. A lot of people would look at that type of art from close up and go, wow, that is really sloppy. But as you move back, the form takes uh, on a real solidity and a real richness. So once again, this uh, particular piece, this classic baseball is uh, in the homage to uh, Dick Grote, one of uh, this country's uh, great baseball players and uh, the opening price for this particular piece is uh, $100. It's valued at uh, $1,600. That's the market value. And uh, it's uh, really, uh, it's wonderful to be able to offer this to uh, clientele. A few other uh, attributes of this particular painting. Uh, when I did paint it, there was uh, an artificial light source coming from the right side, and then there was this uh, uh, real uh, soft natural light filtering through the window. So you'll notice there are some cool areas over on the left side, like this little indication of a cool spot. The other thing that was really neat to see while painting this baseball was the uh, reflection, reflective quality of the table that the baseball was uh, resting on. So you'll notice that there's this, this little uh, area of light down in the bottom half. Uh, and it was interesting to be able to observe the relationship between the light here and the way the light interplayed with the uh, bottom quarter of the baseball. So. Uh, this is a great piece.